So just a short ride from Rome, exhausting ride, but short ride from Rome. Uh, we are now out in what is essentially countryside, and you wouldn't believe how close to Rome this is. It's like right there. Um, so I wanted to take you out here to the ancient Appian Way and show you the park surrounding the catacombs because I think this is an area that is so beautiful and so different. And so many people who come to Rome completely miss it. Even though, you know, I left Rome on a bicycle less than a half hour ago and I'm here. So it's very easy to get to. You can get here on the bus or a taxi. It's about a 20 euro taxi ride, so not inexpensive, but suddenly we're home. And that's the thing I think is so beautiful. I wanted to show that, share this with you today, is that this is also Rome. Rome is not just the big city and the noisy scooters and the crazy. It is all those things, but this is also Rome. And this is why I think it's the most beautiful city in the whole world. So these are the catacombs. And this is where I bring people on my tours, usually. This one, or there's another one, actually, uh, that I like a little bit better. But this is sort of the one that everybody comes to. And the catacombs of San Calisto, standing from right here, it's a great place to understand what catacombs are. So, the ancient Roman civilization was not Christian, as you know, but after the life of Christ, um, people like Peter came to Rome and started to proselytize and, and gather followers. And so Christianity became a cult, essentially, something that was underneath, it was sub, sub pagan religion, and they had to keep it quiet because the problem with Christianity for the Roman emperors was that it was a defiant kind of religion. Uh, the issue is, when you think about it, what is the basic premise of Christianity? It's human rights, it's dignity, and it's uh, a, a sense of, of righteousness, I guess, I, justice. Justice is the right word. And the Roman emperors wanted nothing to do with justice. So uh, I was in Israel recently, I did a tour of Israel this year, and I got to see um, some of the sites in Israel, and uh, it was interesting going to the Masada, because at the Masada I'd read a lot about that, uh, and that was basically a stronghold of uh, Jewish people who were being attacked by the Romans, and they very defiantly held their ground and it ended very badly for them, but uh, the lesson from the Masada to understand in history the conflict between Judaism and Romans and Christians and Romans is that the Romans believed in lots of gods. They had every god. So when they attacked a place and they dominated it, what they did then is they said, hey, instead of enslaving all of you people that we just dominated, you now are part of the Roman Empire. You can join, you can pay taxes, you have to pay taxes, but also you just can worship all of our gods. We have hundreds of them, you have hundreds of them, just give us all of your gods, we'll incorporate them into our pantheon. And this was how they approached every civilization that they met throughout the Mediterranean. And it worked uh, because people would be accepted. They went to Gaul, they went to all these other places. And as they dominated people, those people were Romanized. And Romanized included accepting other gods. Then they met, of course, the Jewish people who said, no, 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 we have one God, only one God. We cannot worship your gods. And the Romans interpreted that to be an act of political defiance. They couldn't understand how you could have only one God. That made no sense to them at all. And so they thought that the insistence of the Jewish people to have one God was a direct political challenge to them. So that starts the diaspora, of course, and a lot of other troubles, but the Christians end up coming upon the same problem. They have one God. They don't worship many gods. And in the same way that the Romans took exception to the Jews, they took exception to the Christians in the same way. They can't understand this. And also the element of human rights, that all people have the same rights. That doesn't work in a society that has an emperor and patricians and you know your place. Uh, so Christianity was an extremely threatening religion.
uh, to the Romans and they certainly did not want it to spread because they didn't want every person in Rome thinking they had equal rights. They didn't want every person in Rome feeling like they had privileges that you know the emperor certainly didn't want them to have. So Christianity became the, uh, the enemy of the state. And that's why they pursued anybody who was interested in Christianity. Uh, of course, the famous ones here in Rome would be Peter, of course, who was crucified upside down. Uh, this area here is very famous, actually, right around the corner here. There's a place called Quo Vadis, and that is the place where Peter, who escaped from prison, he was captured by the Romans, he escaped from prison, he tried to leave Rome to save himself, and when he got to this very spot, about 200 meters that way, he was standing there, and a man approached him and said, Quo Vadis, where are you going? And he said, well, I'm leaving. And the person that he saw, it was Christ, who had approached him and said, why are you leaving? You need to go back and face your, your fate. Um, so there are a lot of, of Christian religion traditions that take place in this area on the Appia Antica. Uh, so the catacombs plug into the story I've just told you uh, because Christians could not be buried in a normal way with the regular Roman people. Romans, some of them cremated. Uh, there were just a lot of things that didn't me mesh with their traditions. And so Romans uh, who were Christians wanted to be buried in secret. So uh, landowners near the city of Rome would often donate their land for these Christians to be secretly buried. And all throughout the Roman countryside, uh, there are catacombs. It's not just this one. There are lots and lots of them. Uh, but if I show you right now this field, underneath the ground here, deep underneath the ground, there are there's several stories of tombs of Christians. It looks beautiful and pastoral now, but if you could dig straight down right underneath my feet right here, you'd end up in a graveyard. And it's a perfect place for it because this area here is full of tufo, uh, the volcanic material that makes up the primarily the soil around here. It's light and porous and it can be dug with fingers and stones so they could excavate way underground and also it keeps the temperatures the same all the time like a really great wine cellar. Uh, so it preserved bodies and it was the perfect place to bury people but also to create uh, family tombs and altars where people could go and they could uh, practice their religion with their deceased loved ones. Uh, so it, this is a good message on a Sunday morning to remember the origins of, if you're Christian, uh, of the religion and to remember the struggle that they had at the time uh, to keep their religion and think about all the people who died to be able to practice the religion that they felt was so important. And, you know, maybe I'm biased because I've, I've been raised Catholic, but what I think is important that, that Christianity did for the world is it shook, shook up the social order. It shook it to its foundations, and it gave every person human dignity, which is something nobody had had before. And I don't know if maybe you've ever thought about that, but it's true. In the ancient world, there was no such thing as individual human dignity, and it's the coming of Christianity and the, the ideology of Christ that brings that along. So that changes everything. And that's why 330 is such an important year, and I keep talking about that, is that Constantine, his mother actually becomes Christian first and wants him to join the church. And eventually on his deathbed, he becomes Christian and makes it illegal to not be Christian at that point. Prior to that, it was illegal to be Christian. But at that point, he had no choice because between the time that they started a catacomb like the one I'm standing at and when Constantine arrived here, it had taken off like wildfire. Of course it had. People wanted to be a part of a religion that was hopeful, that had an afterlife. Romans didn't believe in an afterlife. This is all you get. And the only afterlife you can have is memory. So Christianity offered people a heck of a lot more. There's no mistaking why they chose that. Uh, you know, it is, it is not a good ideology in a lot of ways, and that's why a lot of people uh, certainly follow it. So it's a little Catholic tradition for you today. Uh, so I'm gonna just walk through here and you'll get a little view. We have some lovely suore or nuns sitting on the bench over there. It's all closed down because of COVID. They, it looks like they are doing visits, but only by, um, only by reservation. Normally this place is absolutely swarming, swarming with humans. And they announce on their big loudspeaker, German, German language, English, English language. And they have, herds of people but to be here today look how absolutely lovely lovely it is i wanted to come to this part of town now even though it's a little late it's almost six 
uh, because I wanted you to get the golden light out here along the Appian Way. It's just magnificent. Beautiful, beautiful light. And the big cypress trees. So I'm gonna walk you this way a little bit. Uh, this area is very, very big. And I don't know how far I'm gonna go because I did have a bike, but the bike kind of pooped out on me. So we'll see if I can go. Oh, but from here, look, you can see the walls of ancient Rome in the distance and the modern city beyond. And this, I think for a touristic site has one of the most lovely settings. Oh, listen to the cicadas. Hard to believe, isn't it, that uh, this kind of place, oh, we'll go this way. Yeah, see Quo Vadis? There's a church over there that um, marks the spot where Peter was fleeing. And this direction marks the way to the ancient Appian Way. So we'll just do a little saunter down here if you don't mind coming along with me. This is so, so beautiful. And what I love about Rome is that Rome can at the same time be an aggressive, busy, loud, modern city, but then it can also be a place of great peace. And when you walk along a place like this, I feel like I've been in a time machine. I can imagine the Roman soldiers and their legions marching out into the fields past this on the long Appian Way. I can imagine the Christian martyrs quietly at night by candlelight digging their, their tombs. You can imagine the farmers. And somehow, 2,000 years later, here we are. And we've got the same scenery that people saw. Maybe Julius Caesar saw this, who knows? Maybe Augustus. And the other thing I think we all appreciate about Rome so much, those of us who love this city, is the colors. Look at those long, beautiful shadows and the gold of the stone and the blue of the sky. It really is just magnificent. And the olives. So as I'm strolling, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and pop them into the comment bar. And I am very happy to, to answer questions. This is going to take me a couple minutes to get to the Appian Way so I can show you the actual street. So we can do a little walk and talk. Uh, beyond the hedge over there, that is the, the Appian Way. I'm not walking there because it's not super pleasant for a pedestrian, as it turns out. Uh, it's narrow and the cars are a little bit unforgiving. This is a little bit more elegant way to walk. But you can kind of put yourself here and... The scent of the air is very sweet and late summer. Doesn't quite smell like fall yet. It's very hot too, so it definitely keeps the summer feeling going. We have Stations of the Cross along this way so that people who are going to visit the catacombs can pray. And typically this area would be really full of pilgrims from all over the world who want to come and pray. So the, the, the thing about Rome that is fascinating is that you have a city with two different faces. It, well, more than two really, but two primary faces. And those faces are ancient and religious. And this is a place where those two things intersect. And that's why I like coming here because it gives you the sense of why things are the way they are and how the ancient and the, the religious are really the same thing. Uh, you should know that Christianity is basically sort of a, a byproduct, a child of paganism. Uh, think about all the saints we have. How many saints do we have? We have thousands. We have saints for everything. We have, there's a patron saint of television, you know, a uh, patron saint of eyes, uh, all kinds of things. So the Romans had the same thing but they had uh, their, instead of saints, they had their gods and goddesses. So the traditions from the past have really 
always continued. And I love that about this city because it, it's the place you find that intersection and you realize if you're a Christian, if this is something that's important in your life, you're part of a much bigger and longer picture. You're part of a picture that goes back, you know, to the 700 BC, basically. Because the traditions that we carry on, a lot of them in Christian religions, are the same as they were during the time of the Romans. Of course, we give gifts at Christmas, right? They had Saturnalia, which just happened to be exactly the same time as when our Christian Christmas is. So, so many connections between then and now, it's that sacred and profane, and you can't really get so uh, wrapped up in trying to sort it out because it's all the same thing. And you just appreciate it for what it is. So, we have so some beautiful, beautiful trees here. I love these umbrella pines. Uh, they, that is their natural growth habit, is to look like an umbrella. And they're very unique here in Italy. Yeah, it's so, it's incredible to just walk steps from a crazy city. And don't you feel like you've gone back 500 years? If you took these cars away and you put horses here, you may as well be in the 1500 beautiful long shadows. All right. Okay, so we're going to the Appia Antica now. Look at the beautiful hills in the distance. And the cicadas, I hope you can hear them. They're so loud. So now we're gonna hit the cobblestones, right? I know that you're not physically here with me, but I know you're all walking behind me like my tour group. So this has been such a joy, being able to spend time with you and feel like I'm back doing my job again, because I miss my job so much. So I'm kind of doing my job still, but just doing it, uh, you know, virtually. I've, a bunch of people are asking me about my PayPal info. Thank you so much for asking. There, you can see that on previous posts. Uh, my PayPal account is all one word, Sarah with an H in Italia at yahoo.com. And I really want to say that I appreciate all of the kind uh, outpouring of support you guys have given me uh, because it just, it made me stay longer. It encouraged me to stay longer. And I feel like I get to actually go to my job that I love so much. Ah, the Fosse Aradiatine. You know, I'm not real good on the history on this one, but this was a cave where a bunch of Romans were murdered by the Nazis during World War II. Um, and I can't remember the entire story to it, but it was basically, as I remember, the Romans uh, killed a uh, Nazi, and in exchange for that, the Nazis killed a whole bunch of random people in these caves. And so that is now a spot considered to be a martyrdom area. And this, I don't know what's going on here. This must be a wedding. Oh, indeed. All the Romans out in their finery. Oh, and look, there's, there's the bride. Fantastic. Do you see her? Lovely. So this is uh, the Catacomb of San Sebastiano. This is the one that I tend to like to come to the most. Uh, so I've brought, if you've been with me on the Rome tour, this is where I usually come. Uh, I have never seen a wedding here. Oh, look at the bride, there she is. Uh, so normally what you do is you go in that door on the side there and you go down underneath. And uh, it's like a, a village down there. They have all these buildings down there that are pretty incredible. Uh, and it, it really looks like a city of the dead. Uh, this is actually much better than San Calisto. They're really beautiful. But today we've got a different kind of celebration. Not a, uh, we've got a, look at all the people, how beautifully they're dressed. Okay, so let's continue walking a little bit. I'm not sure where this is gonna lead me. Uh, I might try and see if I can get my friend Susanna Peruchini to join us here for a few minutes because she lives in this area. Uh, but I'm walking now on the stop, the, these cobblestones, which this is the ancient Appian Way. So uh, you know all about the roads that lead to Rome, and those roads come from Rome, uh, like a, like veins, like going, it's coming from a heart. 
and the ancient Appian Way is probably the most famous heading to the south out of Rome. So these old cobblestones are hundreds of years old. Not so much fun for riding a bicycle on, I have to admit. I definitely got a little shake it up, but it was, it was worth it. Uh, so this is a wonderful place to come and walk and just appreciate the countryside, but also it's really cool to think about how many generations of people in the past have walked this same road. So I'm just gonna walk a little bit down this road and enjoy the sunlight and the cobblestones and the atmosphere. Uh, the Romans, because it's Sunday, a lot of them are out doing family things. Typically a Sunday in Italy is spent with family. Uh, it's really reserved for family. So typically if you were here, you would uh, have dinner or lunch with, probably like a late lunch with your family and then spend the afternoon drinking coffee or a mahdi and discussing things. So uh, really, it's, I love how family oriented this, the weekends are, the Sundays are here in Italy. So we have a ruin coming up up ahead and I'm gonna see if I can, I don't know if I'll be able to get in, it might be too late, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying doing this for you guys because I think uh, it's so interesting to, to look at, at places we visit, not in a touristic way. How can we look at everything that we visit in a more holistic way? What is the point? Why do we visit the things we visit? Just because they're, you're being told they're important? I think it's more important to know why and what makes us want to connect to this history. So this, I believe, should be the tomb of Cecilia Metella, but let me see up ahead, and if we can get in, we will. But these are ancient Roman ruins just out in the countryside, and if you drive around here in a car, you would find hundreds of these all over the place between Rome and Ciampino and other places as well. Okay. I'm getting pooped, I have to admit, but it's all in the name of virtual tourism, right? So, and you guys really have to thank my dad. My dad is the one who insisted I come on this trip to start with. Actually, he was, it was dad. Thanks dad, it was your idea, I know. And it was my dad's idea to stay. Uh, oh, beautiful. Let's, let's have a quick look into this really pastoral romantic ruin here. Now, if that doesn't look like a painting, I don't know what does. Oh, sorry, a little blurry, a little out of focus. Whoop, there we go, that's better. Okay. Yeah, I may be too late. So this is a villa. I think it was a villa of a patrician, but I think we may be too late. I was getting bogged down waiting for Santa Prisede to open for you. But on the other hand, even if we can't get into a site, this, this time of night is just so lovely. Yeah, Villa di Masencio, that's the name of this ancient site, which is one you've probably never even heard of. And there's so many more like this. So this is something maybe perhaps for your bucket list is to come out and walk the ancient Appian Way. Stop at all the catacombs. Ah, uh, yeah, there's the former entrance. Actually, that doesn't look open at all. So we're gonna walk just a little bit more. And what I'm hoping, maybe if I can get my friend Suzanne on the line, is perhaps for sunset, we can go out to the aqueducts but I might be too late. So I think I'm gonna take a little break, you guys, 
and see if I can get a hold of my friend and take you out to the aqueducts. If not, if I can't, I'll head back into central Rome and I'll do one more thing for you guys tonight. I know some of you are interested in seeing the Spanish steps, so I'll try to uh, head out there tonight if that if the aqueduct park doesn't work uh, I'll see if I can come out and visit you and take you out for a visit there But every day something new and fun tomorrow Please be sure to join me. Uh, I'm gonna actually be streaming all day my time Italian time So when you wake up, there's gonna be lots of presents on your Facebook feed I'm gonna be joined tomorrow by um, my friends Fabio and David who live in Orvieto and we're going to do a little exploration of the countryside there. I think we're gonna to go to a cheese farm or something like this uh, and visit some of the villages that are just to the north of Rome. It's one of my favorite areas. So I'm really excited about taking you up there and doing a little day trip uh, with some friends. So ciao for now. Hopefully I'll be back with you in just a little bit. If not soon, probably in a couple of hours, okay? Mwah, un grande abbraccio, grande abbraccio e abbraccio, which is a hug, and ci vediamo presto.